It's the Q. Here is your host, Jeff Crick. Hi, Jeff Rick here from theCUBE. We are on the ground at the Western um, San Francisco. We are at the HBaseCon 2015. We were here a number of years ago. We wanted to come up and get an update on what's going on. Uh, a lot of excitement and a lot of uh, really interesting developments. We're joined in this next segment by our newest Wikibon contributor, George Gilbert. Hey, George. Welcome. Good to be here, Jeff. Um, and we also have a special guest, George Chow from Simba. Um, Simba fits into a lot of interesting areas. So George, I'll let you describe what you guys do, what your mission is. Sure, thank you, George. Uh, thank you for the time to, uh, you know, to speak with you guys all. Uh, Simba technology has been providing connectivity to um, basically databases for a long time. Uh, we've been working providing ODBC and JDBC technologies for about 20 plus years. Uh, and in the last little while, we've seen a lot of um, resurgence in the database field with uh, NoSQL and with Hadoop. Uh, and so we've been essentially been working nonstop to basically bring all the good technology that we've built in the last little while up to date. Yeah, so we joke a lot at, at, uh, on theCUBE that you know a couple years ago, if you told somebody at a cocktail party that you worked on databases, they might uh, go talk to somebody else. But now it's a pretty dynamic space and a lot of interesting developments, especially over the last several years. So for a couple of years, starting, I don't know, maybe in 2009, it was NoSQL, you know, and it, NoSQL meant no SQL. And you said something earlier interesting that Impala, the the MPP uh, SQL query product from um, Cloudera, was a, a turning point. Tell us tell us what that meant and and what's followed in that train. Sure, I, I remember starting out at you know about 2009, 2010, 2011. In that era, the uh, the whole data space was essentially, as you say, no SQL. Uh, everybody's um, s uh, statement was like, you don't need schema. Uh, and so when, when, we, when, we, when we took a look at the market and we said, you know, like, there's still a need because when we look at the tools, the tooling was all around SQL. And so uh, when we, you know, came to the market, um, you know, it, it was a tough stretch in uh, like 2011, for instance. Uh, but what happened was that, um, you know, we, we were ma making our pitches and in 2012, I mean, I think that I saw was really the uh, watershed moment because I think it was like in October uh, when Impala uh, was launched. Uh, and it was like at the at the, at the next strata. strata. At the next strata, it was like January 2013, uh, and suddenly you can see literally the entire floor like changed. Uh, suddenly everybody thought that SQL was a good idea again. Uh, and then to me, I mean, that really marked you know the, um, the the starting line for everybody to bring their own you know SQL MPP technology back. So tell us what did that mean in terms of customers who had already invested in SQL. Um, data warehousing technology for decades. What were they doing now with Hadoop and SQL interfaces to Hadoop? Well, I mean, what I see is that there's now a rapid evolution. Um, I mean, as, as you see, you know, the traditional data warehousing technology is built on SQL. Uh, and this new generation of technology that is just adopting SQL, essentially now will fit. Um, and if you take a look at it, um, the whole data lake concept, for instance, you know, it's basically a, um, it's a hybrid idea, uh, talking about something that you know previously was fairly, uh, you can say, you know, f uh, feature poor like HDFS, uh, becoming a lot more capable, uh, because now not only do you have HDFS, uh, you can actually put something, um, you know, a schema on it. Uh, you could apply, you know, any type of uh, metadata. So I mean, just to pitch, you know, maybe one project that I'm involved in, sure. uh, with the idea of Apache Drill, for instance, that, that that's what they're trying to do. What they're saying is that uh, you can actually put the metadata in the file system alongside the data. Uh, you don't you don't put it behind any walls. You don't you don't even put it inside the meta store. I mean, you can definitely use the Hive meta store, but uh, if you take a look at Drill, you know, Drill allows you to put views for inside inside Drill the file. Drill being the um, MapR uh, yes. sponsored product. Yes. What is so what does Drill um, allow you to do in terms of taking the best of traditional data warehousing products and now the sort of flexibility of, of HDFS? I, I think uh, Jack put it very well, Jack, Jack Nadal, the, uh, the committer. I mean, I think he, he was the one who coined a term which I quite like, you know, which is punk SQL. <laughs> <laughs> uh, m most people know SQL as he calls it, like as, as mother made it. Uh, so it's the you know good old fashioned sequel that you all know, the one you, you learn from school. 
Uh, but any of these SQL data stores nowadays, uh, you know, are trying to obviously provide more capability. And so they do that by way of extensions. And their extension, I mean, he, he coined the term punk SQL uh, as, as basically uh, what I would say, you know, s syntactically consistent uh, ways that look and feel right to somebody who is actually using and writing SQL. But what, and, and so tell us then, if, if you were sort of, had to do the schema on write, you know, everything organized up front before you even put the data in with a traditional data warehouse, how does this help? Uh, this, this helps a lot because now actually you don't have to have that schema, or rather the, the schema can be fairly flexible because um, like in the, again, in the case of drill, you know, you're talking about, uh, for instance, you can create definitions that are on the fly in the file system along with the files themselves. So that means that um, those files, you know, because they are alongside the data in the file system are accessible to anything. Uh, and so you don't have to worry about, you know, looking up the metadata because if you can get to the data, you can get to the metadata. So that means it's more self-service. Yes. You, don't, you don't have to go to someone and say, in your upstream system, you know, go mess with the, get me more data, fix the pipeline. It's like, if you got I can the, go. If you can get to the file system, like literally in the case of Joe, that's what it is. If you can get to the file system, um, you can see the files, whether it is a TSV file or a Parquet file, whatever, um, JSON file even, the, the, the most extreme. Um, you can actually have the metadata right there alongside. And you can rewrite that, you can, you can open that up, you can have multiple views. Um, it's, it's basically, literally, like the ultimate in self-service there. Do you see then Drill as, as big a um, catalyst or change as Impala was several years ago? Yes, I mean, again, you know, for the fact that I've, I've worked on it, I, I mean, obviously you can call, call me biased, but definitely I see th there's a lot of capability there that is, you know, I would say Mapbox is doing a fairly good job in terms of uh, realizing. So um, yes, I would say um, it's, it's really, a, at this point, I think um, it's, it's still an open race. I mean, there's a lot of good technology and a lot of good products coming together. Uh, and it's really the case that if, you, if you're looking, f if, you, if you need an MPP engine today, uh, you really have like an embarrassment of riches. Tell us about that embarrassment of riches. Why is that the case? And where, uh, how are they, wh what are their different sweet spots? Um, it's, I mean, the, the field is in new enough, I'm not sure I'm the best authority to, to, to give that, uh, the word, but I mean, in terms of sweet spot, I would say, De depending on uh, you know what you what you align with, I mean, what, what one of the big things that I see is with literally is the uh, is the access. Uh, so, so some some of the engines are, are definitely aligned with some of the file formats and some of the storage. Uh, so for instance, if, if you t take a look at uh, like for instance, um, Impala, um, you know, probably uh, you know prefers and and, and, and run best against things like Parquet. Uh, so not to say that other engines don't do it, but I mean like. If, if you are, if you invest in Parquet, you know, you probably have gotten started with Impala, and that's not a bad choice at all. Uh, and in the, in, the, in the case of, let's say, you know, Hive, for instance, similarly, if you invested in Hive, you may be looking at, and you might have already a lot of investment in uh, or, or, or RC files. Again, you know, it's not a bad choice, and uh, given the pace that the, uh, the, uh, the Apache Hive project has sustained, you know, I mean, that Hive is, as you, as you can tell, you know, still a very viable project. Uh, in, in many ways, you can call them like literally still the incumbent to beat. And um, what about the so many other um, MPP projects, whether it's um, Hawk or, or Greenplum itself or Actian or Vertica, you know, there, we, we saw so many grow up in the pre-Hadoop world. Where, where do they fit? I, I, I see them as being uh, commercial options that make a lot of sense for you if you have a you know, particular need that, that, is, that, that they fulfill. Um, a, a lot of it is, is literally you know, what, what, you're, what I see you as being comfortable with and whether th that particular product has, uh, has, a, has feature sets that you like. So in, in, let's say in the case of Vertica, you know, if I recall, uh, they have um, a fairly good projection feature. Uh, and you know, which means co culling the columns. Uh, no, actually, if I recall the way they explain the, the way that it was uh, that I recently refreshed myself was that uh, whenever you if, if if you need a query to if you want to optimize a query, you basically can build a projection set against that. Uh, and even though you may feel that is expensive, 
uh, like, but I mean, in this stage of storage, I mean, cost is actually not too great, and the performance that it gives you is actually pretty good. Um, and you know, it's like I said, it's, it's still a viable option. So we're getting the hook. We're we're uh, late on time, but before you came on, George said uh, you, you're the guy. You're like Switzerland and Penn Station. You're you're the neutral observer, and everything goes through you guys. So from that point of view, and you talked about some really significant catalyst moments in the industry, some watershed moments. What are you looking forward to over the next six months, twelve months? Uh, I'm probably looking forward to I think H base, um, you can say um, you know, m making some big milestones this year in some way or shape. I mean, I've been watching HBase probably since about 2011. Uh, and this year, I mean, it's just special for the fact that there's so many uh, engines and so many systems who are now coming together and who are actually growing up and building on top of HBase. Can it be both a transactional store and an analytic store as well? Yes, actually. And if you take a look, there, are, there literally are, um, I think, um, companies who are taking that approach. Um, I mean, offhand, if I recall, um, who was it now? Uh, I, think so, is it, or, or I, think, I think Splice Machine, for instance. Yes. Splice so Machine, for work. instance, it, it's uh, making a go at uh, making a transactional system of it. Uh, obviously, you know, Phoenix, you know, to some degree, you know, has quite a bit of transactional capability. Uh, when you take a look at what Microsoft, Microsoft is doing uh, with, uh, with their um, commercialization of HBase on Azure, I mean, you can see that as really transactional. Oh. Good stuff. Well, George, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes out of the conference to sit down with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. And George, as always, good to sit down with you as well. I'm Jeff Frick. We're at HBaseCon. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.